Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to take you on a plant tour. Over the past year or so, I have been really liking house plants. I've never really been into plants that much, but I'm really enjoying my house plants and I'm gonna show you what I got, where I got them, how to take care of them, and some benefits that they include. So let me take you around my place and show you all my plants. This is my newest one. I just got this today from Costco and she is a beauty. I still have the tag on it. It is a giant bird of paradise and it was only $43 at Costco. So I just had to get it. And you come over here, we have here the pothos. It's trailing down. And then I have a burgundy rubber tree, which has been very busy growing some new leaves. So I'm loving to see that. Over here, I have a couple of cactus. And I have a philodendron. Striped dracaena. Snake plant. This one was in rough shape, but look at it, it has a new baby growing, so that is awesome to see. I had to stake it up to keep it from falling over. Gaster aloe. Tree house leek. Aloe. That's it for the this. I have a little inch plant. Here is my propagation station. So I have a bunch of different cuttings going in water. Herbs, and they're great for cooking, especially because they're right in my kitchen window. I have mint, basil, and oregano. Way up here, I have another pothos. This one I actually got from my grandma. I took a couple of cuttings and propagated those. That is actually doing fantastic. I'm very happy with that right now. Right when you walk in, you see this spider plant. And look at all the cute little babies it has going. Then I have another snake plant. This one I had attached to the stake because it was in a very rough shape when I got it. And then one of my favorites is this Monstera. I have always loved the look of Monsteras and this one is doing great. Look at her. And then over here, I have another inch plant. This was actually from the same one as in the bunny, but I ended up propagating it and I got two plants out of it. And finally, I have another spider plant right above my bed. Those are where I have all my plants. Let me tell you a little bit about each one. Okay, first let's talk about the snake plant, otherwise known as mother-in-law's tongue, and it has a bunch of other names as well. This likes low to bright indirect light, so wherever you put it, it will probably thrive. It also does not like a ton of water. You wanna water it every three to four weeks or depending on the time of year. And if it's the summer, you may need to water it a little bit more often. Just make sure that the soil is completely dried out before you rewater. You do not wanna keep this constantly wet. It will get root rot and it just does not tolerate a ton of water really well. It's kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. And it is very drought tolerant. So if you're always forgetting to water your plants, this might be the one for you. These plants are almost indestructible. Actually, this one I got almost on the brink of death. I was at an estate sale and this one was flopping over in its pot. It was very overwatered, I think. And it was just not doing well. So I asked the person if they were selling it and they said that I could just take it for free. So I got this plant and then it has another one that I showed you in my bedroom. That's much taller. The smaller one was in a little bit better of a shape. I still had to wrap the two things around it to keep it upright, but now it is actually doing really well. I probably take these off at some point soon. That just goes to show that even if they're almost dead, they can still be revived. And look at this is all brand new since getting it. It is doing really well. 
Even if you don't take care of it really well, it will still bounce back too. This plant is also really good for filtering out air pollutants. It can get rid of things like formaldehyde, xylene, and some other things that you just do not want in your house. Overall, a very fun plant, and I am very happy with how these are doing right now. Okay, up next I have my three tiny cactus. I got these from Aldi about two months ago, and I recently potted them. They were all in each individual like small container and I repotted it into this cute little pot. Now these, you want to make sure you do not overwater. That is what kills them. I overwatered some cactus way back when I was a little kid. I thought for the longest time that I did not have a green thumb because I could kill a cactus. But just remember, watered very little about once a month and just let them be that is the best thing for them they do like some bright indirect light so i keep them right underneath my tv and that seems to be working pretty well for them they get the morning light but then they get the bright indirect light through the rest of the day and they seem to be doing pretty well there there are my cactus you have to have a cactus when you live in arizona right okay next let's talk about my burgundy rubber plant or my ficus this plant i got from trader joe's i would say probably been about a month now and it has been doing great. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new leaves on it. So this has been a very fast growing plant, which has been fun to watch these new ones come out. So I'm very happy with that. This likes bright indirect light. So in the morning, this gets a ton of light that's not too harsh and then it will get be getting direct light the rest of the day so it does really well with that this needs to be watered about every one to two weeks i usually water it every week recently i've been doing it on saturdays so i just watered this one actually the other day these rubber plants are known for their large glossy leaves and i am very happy with how they look but they do need it dusted off quite a bit they do seem to collect quite a bit of dust i've been noticing and these plants are also known for removing formaldehyde from the air so also very air purifying so overall a very fun plant that i have been happy with okay here is my pothos this plant loves low to bright and direct light so i have it in kind of a place where it gets quite a bit of brighter indirect light and it seems to be doing pretty good there. This one I also got from an estate sale and I am happy with how it has been growing. We got a few new ones on the vine. Oh, but I see a new one even coming up now. So this one is fun. It has a bunch of dangly bits and soon it should be getting a lot more that will be dangling down. I also love getting house plants from estate sales because they usually are pretty well taken care of and they come with pots and all that together, the price is way better than anything you would get from an actual store. So I recommend going to different estate sales if you see them by you and seeing if they have any house plants that are in good shape because they can be a really good deal when you get them that way. Now this plant is pretty easy to take care of. They also need to be watered about every one to two weeks. So overall, most of my plants are in that time range. So I usually do them at about one week. If they're still pretty wet, I will push it off till the next week. But overall, most of my plants like to be watered once a week. So that's how I've been doing them and it has been seemed to be working pretty good for me. This plant is great for people who are new to being plant parents because it is pretty tolerant to most things and it is also air purifying, so that's a plus. And it can tolerate a wide range of conditions, so really no matter where you put it, it will do pretty good, kind of like how the snake plant is. Now, this one may not be the best one to get if you have pets because it can be toxic to them, but that is kind of up to your own discretion. Up next, we have the aloe plant. Now, this this one I got from a bigger one and it was branching off a bunch of little ones so I plucked this one off of it and repotted it and it's actually doing a lot better now than when I first got it. It had either been overwatered or underwatered, I'm not sure what was going on but the stem was kind of mushy and it is a lot better now so I'm very happy with how this one is actually starting to turn out. Now for this plant it likes bright indirect light. 
I keep mine in the window, and this window gets some morning sun, but it never gets that really harsh sun, so it seems to be doing really well in this window. This plant does not need water very often. You wanna make sure that the soil is completely dried out before you water it again. So it needs water about every two to three weeks, I would say, depending on how big your pot is and how it is doing. But you can kind of just tell by how it looks if it needs a little bit of water or not. So just keep an eye on it. And some of the benefits of this are its medicinal property. It is very good if you have burns or cuts to put on it to help with healing. So that is a huge benefit to having these, especially if you get a lot of sunburns and stuff, you can just cut off a little bit of it and rub it on your burn. However, even though it is good for us, it is not good for your pets. So if you have pets, I would keep this away from them because if they ingest that, they can get sick. This this is a fun plant to have in my collection and I am hoping that it grows to be quite bigger. I already see another tiny one coming in right here. So it will be fun to just watch and see how this one grows. Okay, this little guy right here is called a gastrallo, I believe. That is at least what the Apple Images is telling me it is. I got this from an estate sale and it was not even in dirt when I got it. So I had to repot it, but it seems to be taking to it quite well. And I am very happy with how it has been growing. I can even see a little bit growing on the inside. It is coming along. This plant needs bright indirect light. I again, keep it in my windowsill. So it gets the bright morning light, but it doesn't get anything too harsh. And it just keeps getting the indirect light throughout the day. This is a hybrid plant. So it is a mix of an aloe and a gasteria. And it is very drought tolerant, so it does not need very much water. You only need to water it once every like three weeks or so. You just want to make sure that the soil is completely dried out before you water it again. This is a fun plant because it just looks so different and I'm hoping it gets quite a bit larger. I'm not too sure how big these are supposed to get. I like how it looks, but this is not very pet friendly. So again, if you have a furry friend, try to keep it away from this plant. Okay, this one is a tree house leaf or an anum, not quite sure how to pronounce it. It's anominum, anominum. This is a succulent and it likes bright indirect light. Like all of my succulents and uh, plants that like bright indirect light, I usually keep them in this window or close to the window so that it gets the morning sunlight and then it just gets some indirect sunlight the rest of the day. It doesn't get any of that super harsh light that can harm them. This one is really taking off. I have it leaning up against the window because otherwise it will fall over. I might at some point get a stake to rest it up against, but for right now, leaning it up against the window has been working just fine for me. Now this plant is a succulent, so you don't want to overwater these. You want to make sure that the soil is getting dry before you are rewatering it. So you only really need to water it about once every one to two maybe even three weeks, depending on the time of year and what your soil is like. Now these plants are known for their kind of flower-like shape and they're always fun to watch grow. Up here, they're more of a burgundy color and then down here, I have some more green ones. Kind of hard to see, this plant is pot is huge. These are pet friendly. So if you have animals, you don't really need to worry about having these here. Now this is another one that I did get from an estate sale. And I just love how you get such great deals and such a vast amount of different kinds of plants for a pretty good price when you go that way. So that is where I've gotten probably I would say over a half of my house plants have come from estate sales. So that is very fun. Okay, and up next we have my philodendron. Now this little guy I got off of a bigger plant that my mom had. It had this one kind of underneath and it was getting really shaded out because the other one was had huge leaves. So I decided to split them and I took the baby one. This one has been growing actually pretty good. I have three new leaves since I repotted it. So I know that it has transferred over pretty well. Now these plants like low to bright indirect light. So I keep it on my little bookshelf and it always gets some pretty bright indirect light throughout the day and it seems to be working just fine. I'm hoping that one day this will get as big as its bigger parent that I took it from. But for right now, it is a cute size and it fits in my bookshelf, so that's a plus. This plant likes to be watered about every one to two weeks. I usually get about one week out, the pot isn't so big, so it, the soil does dry out a little bit quicker but you wanna make sure that the soil is pretty dry before you water it again. This plant is known for its kind of easygoing nature, so it doesn't take a crazy amount of effort to keep it alive. You still wanna make sure that it is getting all its needs met, but you don't have to worry about it too much. And it also has some air purifying effects, so that is always nice to have. 
Now, if you have pets, you want to be careful with this one because this one is toxic to your furry friends. So you just want to make sure to keep any animals away from this one. So overall, this is a great one to have. Here is my striped dressina. At least I believe that's how it's pronounced. I got this one from an estate sale as well. And it has actually been doing pretty good. It's a more slow growing plant, but I like how it looks with all its fanning leaves. Now this plant likes bright indirect light. So I, with my philodendron, I have it on that same bookshelf and it seems to be doing really well there. About every one to two weeks, I water this plant. You do want to make sure that the soil is completely dry on this one before watering it, but I have been doing about once a week. That's been working for me. You just kind of need to play with it and see what works for your plant. So this plant is known for air purifying and it's really good at removing things such as formaldehyde and benzene from the air. So that's also nice to have. This plant is pretty low maintenance and it is a beautiful plant to add to my collection. Okay, up next we have my giant bird of paradise. I just got this today. I have been wanting one of these for a while now, so I'm very happy to add this to my collection. The plant is so big that you can't even see all of it on camera. It is probably over four feet tall. This will be a fun plant to have. Not sure if I'm gonna leave it in this location right now, but we'll see how it does here and if I may need to move it later, we'll see. This does like bright direct sunlight, so I do think that I might need to move it somewhere where there is more light, but we'll see. I just got it today, so I'm still looking for its perfect home. Now this plant is a tropical plant and it does like to have more water. You don't want the soil to be wet all the time, but you do wanna water this one more often. It says you want about one to two inches of soil to be dry and then you can water it again. I have not messed around with the watering yet. We'll see how much it needs in the future. For the most part, it does like to be watered more often than most of my other plants. These plants are gorgeous and they add a very tropical flair to your home. They have these huge banana-like leaves and they should produce flowers. So we'll see if this one does that, but I am very excited for this new plant and to see how it does in my house. I got it from Costco today. It was only $34, so I was very happy with the deal I got on that. I couldn't pass it up. In my room, in this little seating area, I like to be surrounded by plants. So I have my Monstera right here. This is one of my favorites. This is the first one I knew I absolutely wanted to get when I wanted to become a plant parent. So I'm very happy with how this has been growing. If this plant likes some bright, indirect light, this gets a bunch of morning light. And I also have this in it so it keeps the leaves from getting sunburned because it gets it gets too harsh of light it can burn this just helps keep it a little bit more safe and it also helps to filter out the light in my room so that's another benefit these plants need to be watered about every one to two weeks depending on how wet the soil is you want to make sure that the soil is drying out completely before rewatering it but it is also a tropical plant so you want to make sure it's not going too long without water and it has a lot of aerial roots so if you are seeing a bunch and they're getting longer and almost to the dirt you can kind of just poke it in to the dirt and it will start going down into there to get it even more support now these are not pet friendly so if you have a furry friend you might want to keep it away from this plant but I just love the way it looks. I got this one from Trader Joe's and it was only like $12 so I was very happy when I saw how big it was in the price tag for it and it has been doing great so far so let's just hope it carries on. And then over here here is that snake plant that I was showing you in the other room. This is the much taller one obviously. This one was so tall but when I got it it was just flopping over everywhere and so to bring it back to life I had to repot it into a smaller one. I split up the bigger ones which are here and then the smaller ones are the ones that you already saw. This plant had a lot more structural issues because it was so tall it did not stay up very well so I had to find a stake and shove it into the dirt and then I had this little plastic wraps to tie it on. You want to make sure that it's loose enough that it's not like cutting off anything. You can see it can still slide around pretty easily and it's still a little floppy so we'll see if those get better. This has been about probably two months, three months since repotting it and it is a lot healthier than when I first got it and it even has a little baby one growing right here. This one has not been growing near as fast as the other one but I think it's just because this one was in a lot worse shape. I'm gonna keep trying to nurse it back to health and hopefully one day soon it will be in full health. Welcome to my kitchen. 
Over here, I have a bunch of plants going on. So over in this window, I have all my herbs for cooking. I have basil, mint, and oregano. Now I love to put fresh herbs into different foods. And so this is a great thing to have in every kitchen. I put it in this window because it gets a lot of the afternoon sunlight and herbs do like bright direct sunlight. So it seems to be doing really well here. So I'm very happy about that. Now for watering. I mostly water when I see the leaves starting to wilt. So for mine, it takes about every two to three days, I would say, but you don't want to overwater yours. So just make sure once you see it kind of looking a little more sad, to give it a little bit of water and it seems to always perk right back up. So that is my recommendation for watering the herbs. Now over here is my propagation station. I have a lot of plants, but I also have been dabbling with trying to propagate and start my own plants from little cuttings that I've taken from other plants. Over here, I have propagation station. I got these years ago. They're little test tubes. And whenever I'm propagating something, I just fill it up with water and dip the end of the stem into the water. You want to make sure you're not getting any leaves in there because that could start rotting them. So pluck off any leaves that would be touching the water and then set them in. I have a snake plant going, an inch plant, a garden croton, crouton? Croton. Not quite sure how to pronounce that one. I have two leaves going there and I have a flaming caddy, which I believe that's what it called. And at least that's what the apple pictures told me. Those are my propagations. So now that I come even further down the kitchen, I have this inch plant. I got this tr from Trader Joe's right at Easter, hence the little rabbit. Now this one had a bunch of different ones. I ended up propagating a few of them and I planted the other one in a bigger pot because it was growing too big. And then the propagations I replanted into here and pretty soon this one will also have roots and that will be going into this one too, just to make it a little fuller. But it propagated really well, so I'm very happy with how this one is going. And it is much happier to have a smaller amount in this one pot. It was just getting a little too overcrowded. There's that. And then, way up here, I have another pothos. Now this one I actually got from my grandma. She has a huge one at her house and I asked if I could take some cuttings and she said, of course. So I brought them all the way back from Minnesota on the airplane and propagated them. January is when I got home and started propagating them. And it did very well. I They all propagated really well and it makes for a very bushy plant. And maybe one day I'll be able to take even more propagations and make even more of them. But I just love the coloring on this one. Anytime I look at it, I also think of my grip. So that's also a fun little thing. I hope you enjoyed my plan tour. If you like this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe to keep up with any updates on my plants. I have a bunch more that I wanna get. And let me know in the comments what kind of plants you like or which ones you think I would like as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.